you know, that contract by itself isn't going to protect you, how are you going to know if the, manage, the owner of that factory didn't give the idea to his cousin that owns a factory across the street? And now that factory across the street is importing the product into Australia. Give you a real case study. Australian friend and customer, customer of mine had an exclusivity agreement to be the exclusive distributor for Australia for this brand of uh, bags that they created, backpacks and tents and things. It went great for three years. Um, and then the supplier said, well, you know, the Australian distributor did all the work to set up the, the marketplace, but now they're getting 10% and really not doing any work. I, I, don't, I don't feel comfortable paying them 10%, but we've got this contract in place. So what did they do? The wife of the factory manager set up a warehouse next door to the factory, moved all the technology over there, changed the brand a little bit, and now comes into Australia as the customer owed that Australian customer um, a couple hundred thousand dollars in back royalties. Luckily, the contracts were in place. Australian customer takes them to court, gets paid. But how are you going to monitor what's going on at that second factory? So the scary part is monitoring is very difficult. Enforcement is fairly straightforward. Registering it is really easy. So take care of those simple steps first. Register your intellectual property in Asia, wherever it's being made. Taiwan, Thailand, US, I'm sorry, Indonesia, um, China, of course. The good news is it's very inexpensive to register intellectual property. So if you have a brand, a, a name that you want to protect, do, do so up front. Now, how do you monitor them? You know, there's the expensive way that I talked about yesterday where you would hire an investigator to actually get a job at your supplier to monitor things from the inside. That's one way that's very expensive. Other ways are, you know, keep an eye. Where is your supplier going to trade shows? What does their brochure look like? Not just their English brochure, but their Chinese and you know their their Indonesian catalog. Do you are your products, are your brands starting to show up there? When you visit the factory, what I always do, and this is a little bit of a trick. Hopefully, none of my suppliers are in the audience. But I, I uh, when I visit my suppliers, I say, hey, I need to do some cardboard box testing. I need to make sure that the that these cardboard master packs won't crumble under a drop test. Is it okay if I take some pictures and measurements? Sure, Mike, go into the warehouse. What I'm doing is I'm taking a picture uh, of all the master packs, which usually have the name of the importer. So the, chi the Asian supplier would write down, you know, this is a made in China for ABC Importer Australia under whatever brand. So I'm in there dropping boxes and taking pictures when I'm really just cataloging who is the supplier doing business with. Then I go home and get on Google and figure out um, who is my supplier selling to. And if it turns out to be one of my competitors and it's breaking the contract we have, you know, that's a no-no and I need to sort it out. So you can, there are inexpensive ways to monitor your suppliers. Taobao, this is a website where Asian suppliers sell things out the back door of the factory. So you think that you've got a, a great relationship with a supplier, but maybe your quality specs are reasonable and the supplier has some defects. Believe me, they don't just throw it away and scrap it. They'll sell it on the, on the gray market. And so Taobao is all in Chinese, but it's a great place to see if your product is being sold out the back door. Kind of scary. Um, also, now how do you limit your exposure so your ideas aren't um, taken advantage of? And you